Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be taking a look at one of these. In case you're wondering what I'm twirling around in my hand here. Sorry, I'm in a really weird mood today. Um, it's an R9 290X, which is based on AMD's second generation of GCN architecture. This thing launched back in 2013, so, well, actually about seven years old now. I believe this launched in October, if memory serves. And this particular card um, was really powerful. It was roughly on par with uh, NVIDIA's uh, GTX 780 Ti, or Ti, whichever you prefer. Although I will say that this card has a little bit of extra memory. It has four gigabytes of RAM uh, versus the three gigabytes on the 780 Ti. However, the big complaint about this card, especially from uh, more reference designs, this is obviously not a reference, this is a triple uh, triple fan custom card from Sapphire, it's a really nice GPU actually. Uh, very off topic, but this was one of the first graphics cards that we actually got sent for review, so if you don't know the story of the channel, this actually holds quite a special place in my heart, because quite a long time ago we were doing reviews and stuff but not really seriously it was just kind of fun here or there um and amd largely out of the blue based upon an analysis of uh i believe it was i believe it was of their tress fx technology anyway they started to work with us and one of the cards they sent over was this an R9 290X, and so I've kept this since then, since 2013, and I don't honestly know where the hell the time's gone, but um, anyway, getting back to the talking point, this card on release was ridiculously powerful. It was able to take on GPUs such as the 780 Ti. The only issue with the cards is that they were rather noisy and also put out a ton of heat compared to, let's say, the 780 or 780 Ti. The good news, of course, is that while we can't do so much about the power consumption, uh, as I mentioned, third-party AIB cards did do an awful lot to manage the um, noise levels as well as the heat of the GPUs. So, if you didn't guess, the purpose of this video is to discuss how well it performs in 2020. I decided to test this on several different games because, well, why not? And I decided to choose more punishing titles um, as well. <laughs> um, I did think it was best to limit the resolution to just 1080p. Because, um, yeah, I mean, it's a 7-year-old GPU. And we will get to the benchmarks in just a moment. I do, however, first of all, want to just briefly discuss the specifications of the card. As I mentioned a moment ago, it's based on the second generation of GCN architecture, aka Hawaii, and features 2816 cores streaming processors, 176 texture mapping units, 64 ROPs, the aforementioned 4 gigabytes of memory, this is GDDR5, GDR5 memory, 512 bits bus as well, so it's a very, um, <laughs> it was a it was a pretty complicated uh, memory configuration to put it mildly for the time, and it was fabbed on the twenty eight nm process. This was also a PCIe free card, um, but the question, of course, was what did all of this bring you? Well, clock frequency was about a gigahertz. I say about because obviously different uh, AIBs were free to crank the speeds up or down, and the memory was running at twelve fifty or five Gbps effective. This meant, with the, again, 512-bit bus, we were looking at a ginormous amount of bandwidth, 320 gigabytes per second. Again, back in 2013, that was bonkers. If you compare that to the still actually unreleased at the time PlayStation 4, uh, the PS4 had 176 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. So... Again, to put it into context, 320 gigabytes per second of bandwidth then was a hell of a lot. Um, and the card also supports DirectX 12, although it was only DirectX 12 underscore zero. So obviously no, no uh, ray tracing, variable rate shading, or any of that stuff. 
Um, the card also om nom nom to energy. This particular GPU is a 6 and an 8 pin power connector, and the TDP is uh, about 290 watts suggested, so obviously it's quite hungry, and that's without taking into account things like overclocking, which of course you are free to do. Again, at the time, this card was roughly on par with a uh, GTX 780 Ti, and it was also roughly on par with the generation after that, the Maxwell-based GTX 970. So it's uh, it was a very impressive GPU at the time. Cards such as the Pascal GTX 1060 would outperform it a little bit, but of course the question is, how well does it do today? How well does it perform? Well, I'm glad you asked, because we're going to be testing that very thing out. Again, this is only running at 1080p. However, we are using an Intel bit of an overkill, but an Intel 10900K overclocked to 5.2 gigahertz for all of the cores. And we're also going to be testing it against an RX 5500 XT, which of course is based on the first generation of RDNA architecture. So I think it's going to be quite fun to see how a low to mid-range GPU from AMD in 2020 performs up against this. Welp, there you have it. Um, I've got to say, I wouldn't opt to play on an R9-290X today, but it does alright. I mean, you can play Horizon Zero Dawn. There is uh, texture hitching and problems, definitely, uh, especially when things get busy. I would, outside of benchmarking, honestly crank down the settings a little bit in something like Horizon. But in most games, it's okay. Like You could certainly play a game like Shadow of the Tomb Raider or pretty much any of the games tested here, actually, if you are willing to compromise the settings just a little bit. Um, again, this... Well... It's quite cheap on eBay at the moment. The thing is, though, it's fun to pick it up or try it out as a curiosity. I certainly would not suggest trying one out now. There are much better options, like on eBay, for around the same price, you could get um, an R9 390, which has more RAM. Uh, I don't remember if they did an 8GB model of the 290X, and the uh, 390 was also a little better in terms of power consumption and noise if memory serves, also overclocked better. I do have a 390, I'll do some testing on that actually, maybe if I get a bit of time over the next few weeks. And... Um, a more viable option, if you are on extreme budgets, would be a card such as an RX 480. An RX 480 does pretty damn okay even now. It's basically, of course, the same core as the 580 and 590, albeit with uh, changes on the clock frequencies. So you can, of course, go in with a 480, crank the clock frequency up to let's say 13, 20, 13, 50, depending on how the silicon gods favor you, and you will get a very similar performance to an RX 580. Um, and those cards can be had for a reasonable price. I'm not saying it's the best option, 
But if you do want to kind of get a really good deal on eBay, and sometimes you can get 480s or the like quite cheap, definitely do that. But, as a curiosity, <laughs> yeah, the uh, 290X is still a hell of a fun card, and I, I have to admit, I'm somewhat surprised how well it all works. AMD's drivers still do sweet. You know, you can record gameplay, like some of the gameplay that we're showing here with Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, it was actually captured using the uh, 290X, so I'm, I'm actually pretty impressed with the card. I wouldn't say that it's um, capable of running something at 4K with ray tracing, but given the age of it, I think it does okay. Anyway, with that said, thank you very much for watching the video. The normal stuff, if you have enjoyed the content, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.